In the blueprint for return to school document, it talks about placing your instruction into a workspace. So how do you do that? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can instruct students within a workspace. So I'm going to show you a few different examples. And depending on the group of students that you're teaching, you'll be able to see some entry points for you. So the first one is that you can title the columns in your workspace uh, to guide the students. So this would be um, a perfect example for primary students. So an I can look and do. Again, keeping the language really simple. Um, to guide the students as to what's expected of them in the workspace. In this workspace, the column titles are labeled a little bit differently. Objectives, resources for learning, and assignments. Again, breaking it down in a way that's approachable for your students. Another way is that you want to create a workspace walkthrough. Now, this is highly, highly recommended um, for not only yourself, but for your students and the parents. So what the workspace walkthrough is, essentially it's a screencast video that the teacher has done about the workspace. So once there's a few things in the workspace, the teacher will screencast and start to explain exactly what the workspace is, what's expected of them, and what uh, they can do first, then next, and after. So what's helpful about this is one, it gives parents a really great uh, understanding of what's expected, so that you're not waiting for the student to explain to the parent what's to be done. Two, if the student needs to um, have exposure to what it is again, they have that video there consistently to refer back to. So all it is, is like I said, it's a screencast video that's walking through the workspace and the teacher then has the ability to explain clearly with pictures um, of the exact card you're referring to for the students to have as a resource. So that's another way that you can put the instruction right within the workspace. The last one I'm going to show you um, in terms of just adding some details into a workspace for instruction is adding a header image. So this might be, if it's your first time doing workspace, I would keep it simple and maybe you don't need to do an image. Maybe you just add it to the title card. But again, you can use header images to guide students where to go. So if you're teaching primary, maybe you want to use numbers, one, two, and three. So the students know to go to one, then two, then three. Maybe you want to make sure that you put a picture uh, for our ESL students to help guide them. And then you might want to put the header image as a verb because that will help guide students as to what is expected of them. In terms of demonstrating a concept, one way that you could do it is actually to record a screencast. So this is a tool called Jamboard, which you can find in your Google Drive. And say you're a math teacher. Now I'm gonna do a very basic equation, but you could demonstrate um, a math concept, for example, on a Jamboard and have it recorded. So this could be a lesson type of um, experience for the students. And we do encourage you, no matter how awkward it is, for you to put your face uh, in the corner, because we know that with distance learning and virtual academy, that connection may be difficult to achieve, especially if we are wearing masks. So again, we encourage you, uh, even if you're making mistakes uh, or you might not feel your best that day, that you try and include um, the box down below because the students can then connect with the teacher during the lesson. So demonstrating a concept is really easy on a Jamboard. And then you as the teacher can record that uh, and then pop that into the workspace as a card. Alternatively, you could also have a whiteboard or a chalkboard uh, behind you or holding it up. You re could record a video of those types of things as well um, and then put that back into the workspace. Another option for your instructional practice would be to use Screencastify's webcam only option. So what this does is that it allows uh, the teacher to record a video of themselves really easily that saves right into their Google Drive and it doesn't include anything on the screen. So this is just the interaction that you're seeing here. It's really great uh, if a teacher, say, wants to share a personal story and doesn't want distractions on the page and they just want their students to connect with them. Two, it's a really great opportunity. As you can see, you have a little bit of a wider space to work with. So maybe you wanna hold up an artifact, maybe um, there's a science experiment that you're doing. This might be a really nice option. You can also use it for lots of different instructional videos. So you can chunk the instructions into short micro learning videos and you can pop all of these onto the workspace. So again, using Screencastify's webcam only option, 
is a great way uh, to change up your instruction with the students. Another great strategy for you to place some different types of instruction into a workspace is through YouTube. So if you find a great video, uh, say Khan Academy, for example, and you'd like to put that video into the workspace, you absolutely can just by grabbing the URL to the YouTube video. What's also great about putting that into a workspace is as you can see, it's embedded right within the card. So the student can actually hit play, make it enlarged, watch the video, and then when they bring it back down, they're still in the workspace. So again, alleviating that extra step of having to navigate from tab to tab.